to push record. Okay, so welcome to a webinar on DIY podcasting from home by LIS graduate student Amanda Thompson and UNCG Libraries Digital Media Com Commons, Paula Damasino. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Um, so we're going to get started and I'm just going to pass it over to them, but a couple of logistical things before we start. Uh, this is going to be around 30 to 45 minutes. Um, and in order for the presenters to keep their pace, please use the chat to communicate any questions you have throughout. You are set up to be mute upon entry. Please remain muted during the presentation. And if there's time at the end, you can unmute yourself to ask questions if you have a connection to a microphone. If you do not have a connection to a microphone, you should still be able to see us, yep, sorry, hear us through speakers. And then um, you can use the chat to ask questions. I will only stop them when there is a pause in the presentation. Uh, so there might be some time at the end, you know, so we might have to wait a little bit, but I will be monitoring the chat throughout. If you have any technical issues in Zoom, uh, you can email me. I'm putting my email in the chat, slharlow at uncg.edu. But also remember that this is being recorded. Uh, so keep that in mind. So without further ado, I will mute myself and hand it over to Amanda and Paula. Okay. Um, first of all, thank you to everyone for attending. So when I first started thinking about this project, I kind of thought about it as something that students would be able to use in their media labs or in their maker spaces. And then as time has evolved in the last couple months, we kind of first started thinking about how interesting it would be for our um, for us to show people how they can make them from their home and using things that they may already have. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is part of your pre-production and that is determining an audience. So who's listening? Is it going to be your parents, your friends, your colleagues, fellow students? Maybe it's just going to be a form of private catharsis for you um, and you're unconcerned about having an audience. Those are all okay. The audience does matter though because it will influence how you deliver your content. So some background, I did, I did recently have a podcast proposal approved for my public library system. And when I sent the proposal forward, the first thing that I did was um, I considered our library patrons as well as our local community, the audience and they're both their subject and audience. And that's super broad, but it still gives us an idea of how we want to communicate information and what we want to say. And I'll get into that. So um, if you wanted to create a podcast for people, um, based on their age group or their profession, the way that you communicate the information is going to change. Simple, um, if you, you wouldn't talk to a child, in a, there are children's podcasts out there, you wouldn't speak to them the same way you would an adult. So if you wanted to make a podcast all about dogs for children, you would maybe talk to them about basic commands, manners with, manners with dogs that they don't know, small dog, big dog, kind of thing like that. For an adult who's looking to get one, maybe you would talk about breeds or training mechanisms. A veterinarian would have a very different, um, they would have very different ideas and discussions in, in there. They would probably have more medical terminology. They'd probably also have really bizarre stories of surgical nightmares and weird things that, um, owners and pets alike probably do. So it seems like it's a really small thing and you hear people constantly say, who's your audience? Who's your audience? Who's your audience? But that is super important to do. And once you establish that, I think it kind of starts you on the right sailing direction. Okay. So next you want to have your, figure out what you're going to talk about. And what are you going to call it? Yeah, um, 
my personal podcast that I have that I ha that's private that I that will probably never see the light of day. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it doesn't have a name, but it's just what I'm talking about. And it's just things that I talk myself through, like maybe it's a bad day or something that happened that I think is funny. Um, maybe eventually it'll become something for the millennial on the job market or something of that nature. But um, and for, the, for the time being, it's, it's, um, it's in a dark corner. So will you, one of the things to think about is, will you have a gimmick? Are you going to use, um, like, will you have, will you use accents? Will you focus on something very specific? Like if you're, like there are a lot of, um, a lot of murder-based podcasts out there. So do you want to focus on that? Um, my, the, my proposal that I, that I composed focused on just the library. And that's a, a lot of things that, that that can fall into. So we would have podcasts that, that focus on book clubs or programs or what does a librarian do all day or people that come in in our community. Like one, one um, little subcategory we came up with was interesting jobs. Like how did, how on earth do you get this job? And we were, one day I was discussing with a colleague, the, uh, this woman who comes during the summers who owns a petting zoo and she, you know, she'll walk in there with like a kid, a goat in one arm, and then she'll have the feed in the other and while, all while trying to placate the llama. What is her story? What, how do you get that job? I'm sure that's a really interesting story. So there are a lot of directions that you can take it. So that's the that was that's why I'm sharing this with you is you can have a pretty big idea, but you can still kind of um, or you can have a narrowed idea that can still be fairly large. You do want to be consistent, though, if you decide to have some sort of gimmick. Um, if you're usually just talking about your day and talking about your life and then all of a sudden you start reviewing movies or using an accent that's not yours, that'll get really convoluted and confusing. Um, if you, some of the hosts actually help you with your audience. So for example, uh, Buzzsprout asks you if your planned podcast is going to be explicit. So if you want to use profanity, you can, you've, you're gonna use profanity. However, if you don't use it, or if you go to a host that doesn't ask that, and then suddenly you start to, maybe not a great idea. It, you, um, like, and, and also, you know, like any online content, make sure you're comfortable with it out there. I know it's like the broken record and it's kind of like eye rolls, but you know, think about yourself, like, will this compromise my job or my future jobs? And I always think about if my 88 year old grandmother would be upset with me, what do I really need to put this out there? You need to name and you do need to name your podcast. Make sure it's relevant to what your subject is going to be. When I started working on this webinar, we were thinking about names for what it was going to be. And we came up with at one point we were discussing guerrilla podcasting or gonzo part podcasting and uh, both kind of clever and um, interesting, but they have political undertones that we are not going to have here today. And so that's, and I'm sharing that just so that way you can be mindful of that. If you're not going to be a political podcaster, maybe do not use those type of terms. And then also just the lack of clarity. Like if you called it gonzo podcasting, not everybody knows what that means. They don't know any, they, I didn't know anything about Hunter S. Thompson until college. So if I had heard gonzo, I would have thought about the Muppets, frankly. And, so, but uh, DIY, it's simple and you know exactly what it's going to be. And finally, you wanna be mindful about your copyrights. If you use music or you're going to read from certain sources or reenact anything, 
check up on your copyright stipulations. I know like right now because of COVID things are a little bit fluid and they're kind of up in the air and people are being a little bit more lenient. But there's still but there's still copyright going on. There's still rules that you need to follow. Um, and if you're going to follow make something about a particular like I'm a, if I wanted to make a podcast about every episode of Game of Thrones or something like that, I would, you know, I would just maybe to be careful, say unofficial or unauthorized or something like that. Like I'm, you're allowed to talk about it, but you just need, to, but just for the sake of being careful, because, you know, you do not want some of these um, iconic kind of corporations and big establishments coming for you. Like, you know, you hear about Disney, stopping children's plays or Prince's Paisley Park estate coming for people for copyright infringements. And you just don't want that type of anxiety on your conscience, I promise you. So the next thing we're gonna discuss is script writing. The, um, the necessity of a script is kind of debatable. Not everyone thinks that you should have one. Some people say it makes you sound like a robot and others say you've got to. Um, you I think you should do what works for you personally, but I'm gonna give you some benefits of, what, of scripting. It, uh, for, first of all, it's not a novice move. Like if you listen to a comedian or a sermon from a pastor or even your professors in school when they're giving lectures, they seem like if they seem like they're super prepared and comfortable and smooth with it, it's, maybe they are just that awesome and glorious, but there's also a really good chance that they prepared, <laughs> that they read their material, that they wrote up what they wanted to say, and that's how they were able to reach this point of, um, of ease. So it takes more time but it will, I think it will serve you better in the long run. And it'll also help you when you get into editing. Editing can take a very long time and it can be kind of tedious. So if you don't have a plan and now for what you wanna discuss for an episode, and then all of a sudden you kind of take a, take a turn in another direction and it's kind of irrelevant to, to the episode or maybe there's a lot of white noise going on, you're gonna have that much more to edit and it's really frustrating to do that. And um, what I would strongly recommend, and this is something that I've actually, that I have done before, you read through what you wanna say with your audio, with your audio and your technology on. So that way you can get used to working with your equipment, but you can also get used to the feeling of talking to yourself. <laughs> if you're not interviewing people, you're gonna kind it it's kind of strange to get used to talk the feeling of kind of talking to yourself, but also knowing that people are listening to you when you're talking to yourself. And then you can also just able to listen back to what you're saying and how you're saying it and getting used to what your voice sounds like because I know, I think I sound super weird when I listen back to my recording. So this is all like kind of a way to get rid of those weird, like little maybe anxieties and those kind of quirks that you want to establish comfort with from right away. Okay, next you do want to create a schedule. You want to create, you know, days and times that you're going to post and how much you want to post. I personally don't think you, it, when you're new, you probably wouldn't want to be posting every day. That just seems like it's a lot of, that's a lot of work, depending on how much editing you want to do. You want to create a, ske a schedule that works with you. A lot of hosts actually do allow you to upload your content and schedule when it releases. So if you create a podcast that is meant for people that are commuting into DC or something every morning 
and you know they have they could have anything from one hour to three hours to get in there and you but you, so you want it up at 5 a.m you don't have to wake up at 4 30 to make sure that it's there and um uh, while we're talking about time you know different topics have different hits during or different popularity at different times of the day so if you so if you want to do that you can research what's more pop what type of posts are popular depending on the time of day and that and that can kind of help you establish a schedule having said that i think you need to just go with what you manage uh, the, obviously the nice thing about podcasts is that people can listen whenever they want so that's always so you if um so if you're posting something at a popular time of day, there's still, people can still get to it at another time. In my personal opinion, um, writing and recording and editing and posting and making everything in one day is kind of unreasonable or maybe not unreasonable, but it's kind of a difficult thing to do. I think it's, you wanna, you wanna space it out and let yourself breathe through the process because especially as you're getting used to the pro the editing and recording process okay so now we are going to turn this over to paula thank you amanda um you can go back to the intro the slide before that please um so my name is Paula Damasceno. I am a multimedia instruction coordinator at the Digital Media Commons um, in the Jackson, UNCG Jackson Library. Um, so we are going to talk about production and um, what it means and how you can organize within the production part of your podcast. And in my introduction, I will just tap into a couple of uh, topics that are important for you to, before you get um, your hands on recording, editing, and mixing, which are the three steps within the production part of your podcast. So sound and sound quality. Um, you wanna make sure that your sound is, is as, as pure as possible. Um, you want to make sure that fans, our conditioner, heater, uh, sometimes we do think we are in a silent um, environment, but we are not. And so um, I would recommend for you to, before to start to record, to close your eyes and be mindful of uh, your surroundings, your, uh, the noises that are surrounding you. For example, uh, I, am ha I have been working with my laptop much more than I have uh, worked before. And so at a certain point, at, cer at, at, at a certain point of the day, it will start, uh, the fan, the computer fan will start to work. And that's the computer that I would be recording on. And so I will have to make a choice. Either I stop for a while, so the computer uh, cools down, or I will record with this background noise, like, Right now, my phone is letting me know of a couple of reminders. Um, also, I have to, you know, turn off my phone um, if I do not want to be recording and stopping and um, being interrupted. Um, another thing that you can do, this picture that is on the slide is of a mini booth. So a mini booth reduces the space where your voice will be, uh, the waves of sound, right? Because sound travels in waves, will be, um, will be in when you are um, talking to the microphone. And so uh, you can create that by just using cardboard and getting some foam because then instead of a bouncing back in the walls of this big room, it will be absorbed by the foam in this small booth. So that also, it's really helpful for you to uh, have a more clear voice and a beautiful sound. Um, and that's a setup. Uh, if you're using, and I'm using that on purpose because what happened to me before is that this uh, wired microphone has uh, headset, microphone, and um, headphone, and microphone, right? So it has my microphone here. 
and I was um, um, recording something and I was not aware that that was rubbing against my uh, jacket. And then when I, was, um, when I was listening to it, to the recording, I realized that I should have just taped that somewhere else away from my body. That's just a tip. Um, so the tools that we are going to, uh, one tool that we are going to take a quick look right now for editing, for recording, editing, and mixing is Audacity, which is a free software that you can download from the link I'm going to, um, I'm going to give you the link um, after we finish our presentation. Uh, if you just, and also most, I think most universities have that deal with Adobe right now during COVID-19 that Adobe made um, their uh, creative cloud available for free. And so you can also use Audition. But Audacity is pretty nice because it's free and once you learn, you just can use it for uh, yourself for your projects and then you don't have to. Uh, thank you, Sam, for the the link. Um, so let's go. I will share. Um, well, my final tip is before you start, create a folder on your desktop uh, where you're going to set um, your recordings to go, your Audacity project to be storage, storage there. And so you always know where to find your files. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at Audacity and a couple of tools for recording, mixing, and um, recording, mixing, and um, editing. Okay, um, so just a quick also before we go there, uh, difference between recording, editing, and mixing. So the recording, um, what you're gonna do is to record your voice. You can also use Zoom. If you wanna record an interview, you can still make it uh, an interview podcast during COVID-19. You just set up a Zoom meeting, record that meeting, and then you can use that audio um, and, and add it together using Audacity with whatever narration and comments you want uh, to use it. So recording is ob obviously the process of recording the voice and you can uh, record, export that file as MP3, name it and create metadata for that. And then you're gonna, in the editing part, you're gonna gather that sound, that's, that narration and then remove background noise. Um, I guess that's in the next slide, Amanda please. Thank you. So I put there a lay down uh, for you the difference between these three steps. And again, it's just nice, uh, important to know that because it helps you to organize your process. Um, I will go ahead and share um, Audacity with you. Um, okay, that's my screen. Share. I'm going to share that. Okay, here is Audacity, right? And um, let me see. Let me just move things around. Okay. Okay. So to record your voice, very simple. Um, you can click on the pause. Those are the main tools for you to record and pause the recording uh, and play uh, the recording back to listen to it. So to record, basically, you can uh, just click on pause, click on the red dot. Uh, you see that now your sound is being um, monitored, your voice, uh, the volume of it, and you have your volume, the microphone volume here, if it's too loud. Um, so click on pause to let it record and click on pause to pause and to record back and you see here our waves, right? So once you recorded, let's say 
uh, just one uh, part of your uh, podcast. Good morning. My name is so-and-so. I welcome you to my podcast. Um, I should have recorded that, but okay. So that would be your recording here. You go ahead and you export it. And it's very fast, but um, on April the 20th, I, we will be having a um, hands-on workshop uh, that you can participate in and we can go over step by step of Audacity. So you save your files, um, you can save that narration as an MP3 file. And my suggestion is that for each part of your podcast, you do a different uh, recording and then you have, for example, a file that is introduction, a file that is main content, and a file that is conclusion. And so then you bring them all back for the editing part. And the editing part, you just import audio. I have to, um, as I said, I have intro I recorded introduction and conclusion together, so I can show you that we can separate it, but also I have the main content. So I get the introduction and, co and um, conclusion together in one track, and then when I import the main content, I have a second track. And so here we have um, how to um, can use tools to move and here will be silent. You can use tools to um, um, to select parts and delete if you know that you don't need it. Okay, so um, I just don't want to go too far with it. But so those, uh, the tools for um, what I'm showing you now is the editing part, where you cut, where you paste, where you um, manipulate uh, the parts that you need uh, to, manip to manipulate in order to, so you have the, um, Oops, what's happening? Okay, yeah, yeah, right. Um, to put together your introduction and your conclusion. Just um, a second. Hey. My computer's not the best um, person. Okay, so uh, in the mixing pro process, you're gonna um, then use smooth transitions. That is the envelope tool. I'm sorry for my pause. Um, so you can mark the beginning of your um, recording and then uh, you can just make a fading and a fade out. So I don't wanna spend much time here. I just wanted to, to know that then once you have it mixed together, you will export it all as an MP3. And what is interesting here is that you can also, um, so you have just basically the, uh, the standard presets that are already set up for it. Um, you save it, I would just um, do as a test. and says that my tracks will be mixed. You can add metadata, that's nice because then you can make sure that your name as a, the creator is there. Um, you can also make sure that you can find your files after and um, so this way you preserve your data, your digital content um, in a more organized way. So I guess we can go back um, to the slideshow now. Please, Amanda. Okay, thank you. Do you have any questions about that, uh, the difference between recording, editing, and mixing? Okay, so
so uh, we can go on to the next slide, please. Yeah, so remember that I talked about the folder, the organizing folder. So once you are at this uh, moment where you can export your files, uh, both after recording the narrations, the different narrations, and also after you mixed the narrations or the interview with narrations or with music together, then you export it to the same folder, which I recommend you to create at least at the beginning at your desktop so you can easily find it at, for each episode, for example. Then after you created that, you can just um, put different um, files together somewhere else where you find a better or upload it to the cloud, whatever um, suits you. So um, pay attention to the basic quality sets of your export and you're good to go. Um, so, we can go to the next slide. Okay, so the Digital Media Commons, we do support campus curriculum uh, faculty, students, and staff by providing technical help with multimedia. And so you can request consultations or uh, consultations or email me. I will put my email right now um, for any further questions about Audacity or any other multimedia assignment or project you have. Um, we will have a, an Audacity hands-on workshop on April 20th at 3 p.m. And I will uh, give you the link for that. Let me get the link here. Okay, we'll be on WebEx, which is a platform very uh, similar to Zoom, and I just sent you the, the workshop link. And I have a couple of uh, other links. There is a problem with uh, perhaps if you are using Mac, uh, you can also email me because there is a, um, a fix you have to probably use to be able to use Audacity with Mac OS Catalina, which is the last version of uh, the Mac OS and um, good luck with your podcast making. All righty. Thank you so much for the audacity. No pun intended. Okay. I had to. I'm sorry. I had to. <laughs> okay. So the next part of it so you've recorded now you're going to need a host there are a lot of different ones out there that you can utilize um, you just need to select wisely and really look at what you want to use it for i have experience personally with buzzsprout and anchor those are the, um, the ones that i think oh we'll we'll talk about them so I used Buzzsprout for my proposal for my library system because I thought it really just kind of gives you a lot of bang for your buck and it's fairly reasonable as far as rates go. Um, they handle listing your, epi your episodes for you. Uh, most hosts do will do that work for you so um, so you don't have to worry about making sure that your that your um, episode is on Spotify or Go uh, whatever iTunes is called now and um, or any or, sp or any of the um, streaming services like they handle that for you so that's super convenient and you can save time from having to do that so Buzzsprout will walk you through your process it shows you your, it has like a very clean setup page. It, you know, you name it, you describe it. You can, you actually can, as I mentioned, select, is this explicit? So um, it helps, so that's a really good way to kind of help you organize. And it's very, I think it's very friendly for new people to podcasts. It gives you a little player that you can put on your, put on a website or for social media. 
they allow they allow you to have your episodes scheduled ahead of time and they give you stats so you can see which um, which streaming which service your podcast has the most success so is it um, is it doing well on iHeartRadio or on Overcast or for, for just as an example? And you can upload your transcripts for accessibility purposes. And that's super, I think that's something that's super important to include. And they have a trial that lasts 90 days. You know, the thing about with the trials is most of them do have limits on how much content you can put up, but it's still pretty decent. Um, you just have to kind of think about how much you want to put up. Podbean is similar in that respect. It'll send you to the to to more known places like Google Play, Spotify, Amazon, and Alexa. Their trial is about a month, and you can only upload five hours of content. And they give you some basic stats. Um, Podbean as well as Buzz, Buzzsprout help you with marketing. So I think that's kind of a, a very awesome thing to be able to do. And SoundCloud does, um, does that as well. SoundCloud I include because that one's a bit more, probably one that people are familiar with and that they've heard of. And if you're already a blogger, there's, if I'm saying uh, Castro, and then that green little swishy one is for, if I'm, I'm probably going to butcher how this is pronounced, it's uh, Libsyn, L-I-B-S-Y-N. So if you already blog, or if you're interested in blogging, those you can, um, you can install into your WordPress account. And that's a really, I think it's kind of a cool thing to have some sort of website that goes along with your show just to kind of bring bring it back and people can send you emails or comment and look at it all right there and so I really wanted to focus a bit on anchor because I feel like this is going to be the one that everybody wants to write down just my opinion <laughs> I've actually played with it and it's and I had a lot of reservations because First of all, it's 100% free, and then you can, um, the actual um, words, they're going to get there. So the creator of Anchor was very vehement that it be a free service. He, they did not want people paying to create content. So that's a pretty, you know. That's a, that's a pretty nice attitude to have. It was designed as an app, so it's a lot easier to use on an app than it is on your laptop. And I actually uploaded it onto my phone because I was sort of apprehensive. I was like, well, what kind of quality will my audio be? Because you are limited if you use an app. You're you're just not you're you're not going to need quite as much with the bells and whistles of technology and sound systems and microphones necessarily and if, depending on your phone if you holding it and it's at and you my voice sounded clear you could but then you could hear me like turning my pages so i guess that depends on if that's something that bothers you or not um you can opt with anchor if you want to um if you want to publish it or just keep it private like I do and if or you can cultivate episodes and then decide that you're going to publish them and put them on there live you can of course you can activate uh, sponsorship I think pretty much every host does have some some sort of opportunity for you to involve ads and sponsors so that way you can monetize I did not include a lot of information on monetizing today because I think that is probably a whole nother conversation that could get to really get into the nitty gritty of that type of aspect of it. Um, but they do offer certain things and it'll, usually it's, um, it, it, it'll be a commercial that runs through your episode or you can 
record yourself saying something. Like I think it's the um, beautiful anonymous stories like the speaker will start right off with talking about his sponsors. Um, uh, from what I have gathered, it's not, you cannot directly go to Spotify or it's at least not an easy thing to do if you're gonna try to go to something like Spotify or Apple. It, because it's going to take, it'll, it'll take a lot longer. So it's best to just have a host that will distribute for you. And I know some of these you're looking at that I'm showing you all these ones that are, um, that have trials and then eventually you have to choose a, a payment plan to continue using it and to use it further. But this is still a really good time to kind of test them and play with what works for you and what you want to put out there. And, you know, they all have a very different feeling to them. I just, I thought from my experience with Buzzsprout, Podbean, and Anchor particularly, they just seem to be very aware of people that are newbies. And they are not, and they really just, it's a very step-by-step -step smooth process. And, the, and um, before I even forget to mention it, but um, Anchor has music and little, um, little images that you can select for your show. Now they're gonna be kind of, they're kind of generic, whereas, but you can have an image to associate to your show. Whereas Buzzsprout actually does teach you how to make your own. Okay. So then, oh wow, just do it, okay. Okay, so then you're gonna probably think about evaluating your, your show. You can, obviously you can, you'll be able to measure your successes with the analytics that a lot of your, um, that your hosts provide to you. So you can see where people, where in the world people are listening and where they're streaming it from. But you can also kind of just be a little bit more personable to figure out what's working and what's not working. There are a lot of peer review groups that exist on Facebook where people will ask for tips or respectful feedback and so that way they can learn from one another as they're making these episodes. And they can basically just workshop what they're doing with other people that are kind of in the same boat as them. And, you know, there's always, if you have, if you have access to your planned audience, that's always a good way to, to gauge interest. Like if you have a group of people, if your friends, for example, are your audience, what do they think about what you're saying? Do they like it? Do they think it's funny? Do they think it's kind of, you know, strange? Those are all valid people that you can go to. But there's, and there's always, you know, some good old fashioned self analysis. <laughs> you have to be honest with yourself a little bit. If there, there's some weird sound effect that you found in um, an anchor that's kind of um, polarizing and people tell you that it's annoying or that they don't like it, are you going to keep it before artistic purposes or are you going to change it? If you decide that you want to have a sort of joycey and stream of consciousness as your um, as kind of like your gimmick, but you find that the people following your show don't like that. Are you going to say, well, this is stream of consciousness. This is just how this is going to, this is just the style that I'm working with. Or are you gonna, gonna try to reel it in a little bit? There's really not a right or wrong answer to that, but it is kind of important, I think, to think about those things. I mean, I personally, if I found an, if I found a podcast about something that I was very excited about and really interested in, and then all of a sudden, this per, the, there was a person that I knew was putting on a fake Cockney accent, for example, I would have a very hard time listening to that because I think 
I think it's I think it's always super annoying when people put on because it's just such a weird people who don't actually have that accent do not really sound that way. Um, it's just also kind of insensitive to do something like that. But just anal self analysis, just be just think about yourself, think about what you're putting out there. And maybe if you need if you want to reach a larger audience, then maybe try to redirect yourself. Or just be patient. If you know that you're doing something kind of quirky and kind of different, it might take a while. Like I know that my sense of humor is dry and a bit caustic and sardonic, and that's not for everybody. So it's gonna take a while to cultivate people. Retention and sustainability. How are you gonna keep people interested and how are you gonna keep the momentum? So there are, a lot of different answers to this. There's not one that's more correct than the other. Obviously, if, um, if you want to keep people interested, you need to have some consistency. If you're going to chronicle your daily life and then suddenly you decide that you're going to recite Shakespearean soliloquies, might throw people off a little bit, might confuse them unless they know that you're a theater major or something like that. I also think it's important to have, depend if you're going to focus on yourself or things going on around you, to have some of that real world relevance and not necessarily a, po a political way. Like if you wanna go that route, then go that route, but just be prepared for how it could alienate people and you might have to start a little bit over with making your audience. And um, one thing I was thinking, um, not too long ago, one of my professors from my undergrad days wrote on her Facebook, who was gonna be writing about what's happening right now with COVID-19? Who's gonna be the Daniel Defoe or the John uh, Steinbeck? Now, I'm not saying you need to write the coronavirus chronicles or have a podcast about it, um, but it is something that affects your daily life. So if you're making a podcast about what it's like to work at the, what it's like to work at a bank or what it's like to work in a library, how do you feel about that? How does it change what you do every day? If, are you still working? Are you a student? How has that changed your life and but still talk about the things that make your daily life what it is and then how will it go back slowly it'll probably end up coming back and if and you know if you're if you're someone who's comedic I always find gallows humor to be a form of catharsis you make it you know you just have to make it make it work for yourself um, you know and then maintaining the momentum, of course, you know, when you first start, you're going to have all these really exciting ideas and all these plans and things that you really want to do and you really want to get out there. And then you might hit a wall and realize, I don't know if I have enough stuff. How am I going to keep this going? There are a lot of opinions about keeping your momentum going. The biggest one that I would suggest is making sure that when you're editing and you're planning your scripts, that you have some sort of streamlined process that you can stick to. If you're over, if you're spending five hours editing a 30 minute show, you're going to just exhaust and demotivate yourself. So you want to have, you know, you want to have good content and you want to have editing if you have things that need to be edited out, but you don't want to, but you do not want to demotivate yourself and then have it eventually die. Your podcast, that is. And you can also be, just be creative. Have your friends come in for, and interview them or fellow podcasters make a mini series within your podcast or talk about food or movies or book reviews or school job hunting. If you know, if you're a millennial, what is it like to be a millennial right now? Even though I don't like that term. 
comments or if, if you feel particularly brave, you can ask your listeners what they would like to hear. But I would say the biggest part of making sure that you can sustain and keep things going is choosing a subject that you can, that actually translates to a podcast. Not everything can be podcasted. <laughs> Um, you want to give, to, if like, for example, if you wanted to give people tarot readings, your podcast might want to have a video component or a blog, so that way they can actually look at the cards. Pers and I, for one, I would struggle with an art tutorial or a cooking tutorial if I didn't have pictures or in a, a way to see the process. So those are things to think about in making sure that what you want to add what you want to share is appropriate for the podcasting format so you don't wind up stuck and kind of setting yourself up. Okay, so finally, really quick, I wanted to just put this out there for you guys. Um, just a quick mention, as you start making your podcasts, there are resources available that can help you get started. You, of course, have Paula with the DMC, and you have the ROI department that can help you with research and finding the proper guides and the digital, and, um, digital scholarship on anything that you're trying to look for. Of course, the Digital Act Studio, there are options. You're, you are not by yourself figuring it out if you have copyright questions as well or you can just ask me. That is my email. You are more than welcome to send me an email or if you have a question now, I will, we can take them now, whichever works. Um, Amanda, thank you so much for inviting me to collaborate. I really have to go. I am posting here on the chat. Um, the date and the invitation for the hands-on audacity workshop uh, which is on the 20th 3 p.m good luck y'all and please also my email is on the chat um let me know of anything um i will have to go and thank you sam and amanda amanda yeah. thank you so much paula that was awesome yeah, thank you all for coming. Um, Y'all can put them in the chat. Um, do remember that there is a recording of this. If you registered for this to get in, which you all did, I will email you the recording. Uh, it will be eventually put on YouTube and closed caption um, as well. So thank you, Amanda. And I know Paula had to leave, but thank her as well. And um, if I don't see any more questions in the chat, um, we will slowly end it, but uh, thank you all for coming. All right. Yes, thank you all so much. Afternoon. And uh, that's it. Thank you all. I'm gonna end the meeting, Amanda. Okay. Thank you.